fire from beginning to the end. There's no place for argument. You are God all by yourself. You This, this evening and begin to appreciate the name of the Lord. Begin to exalt his holy name. Begin to give him all the glory. Give him all the honor. Give him all the adoration. Give him all the praise that is due unto his name. For there is just no one like him. Every other God they are but the works of man. He alone is God. Is the everlasting father. Is the prince of peace. Is the way, the truth and the life. Oh, worship the Most High God. Exalt the name of the Most High God. Bless His holy name. Thank Him for His goodness, for His mercies, for His generosity. Thank Him for yet another month. Thank Him. Thank Him. He has been so good. Babu says it's of the lost mercies that we are not consumed. For His compassion fail not, for great is His faithfulness. Bless the name of the Most High God. Exalt the King of glory. Bless him who was, who is, and who is to come. The Almighty, the Omnipotent, the Omniscient, the I Am that I Am, the Ever-Present Help in the Time of Trouble, the Waymaker, the Provider, the, the, the Source. Oh, Father, we thank you. Ever sure, Daddy, we say thank you. Thank you because you fail not. What a great God you are. What a mighty God you are. You are glorious in holiness. You are fearful in praises doing wonders in heaven and on earth. Father, we are grateful. If it has not been you who had been on our side, the enemy would have swallowed us up long ago. But Lord, we are grateful that you kept us alive. Thank you for even the privilege to be invited to your table tonight. Lord, we say be thou exalted. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for in Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. I want you to lift up a voice. It is one thing to come to the table. It's another thing to partake of the blessing of the table. I want you to cry to the Lord and say, Father, I am here today. Let me receive from you. Lift up your voice and talk to the almighty God. Say, Father, I am here today. Let me receive from you. Don't let me return the same way. Don't let me go back empty. Lord, I have come. Fill me to overflow. The power in your body, the power in your blood, let them be manifested in my life. Let me have an encounter with you today. Lord, let your word, let me have an insight, let me have a revelation, let, me, let your word flow into me. Lord God of heaven, have mercy, Lord. Today, in the name of Jesus, don't let me return the same, O oh God. My Father, my God, don't let me return the same. Thank you, Holy Spirit. For in Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. The God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, Jehovah, the man of war. Hallelujah, his mercy. And your earth forever and ever. Oh, praise is only name. Amen. The 
God of Abraham, Isaac, and your mercy endureth forever and ever. Oh, praise Thank you, Jesus. His holy name. Almighty God, the King of kings and Lord of lords, the Alpha and the Omega, a strong God you are. None of your power fails. Father, we thank you. Thank you for today. Thank you for this privilege to be at your table. Thank you for the power in your body and in your blood. Please accept our thanks in Jesus' name. Almighty God, we have not come to meet with man, neither have we come to dine with man. Lord, but with you. Father, we pray. That meal that the apostles ate and their life never remained the same. Today, let there be a significant turning point towards our destiny, Amen. to the fulfillment of your name, Amen. in the name of Jesus. Amen. Father, tonight, heal the sick, Amen. set the captives free, Amen. deliver those that are bound. Amen. Lord, I pray, if there is any sinner here, Father, please save their souls. Amen. And all those who are watching online, Father, let your hand touch them. In the name of Jesus, at the end of this meeting, please take all the glory and let everyone be blessed. In Jesus' mighty name we've prayed. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the living Jesus. Let somebody shout hallelujah. As you are, before you take your seat, I want you to look at the people on your left and on your right and say, welcome, Victor. Welcome. Welcome, Victor. Oh, yes, welcome, Victor. Hallelujah. Glory be to the name of the Most High God. And God bless you as you take your seat as king and queen in his presence. Today is our communion service. But it's a communion with a difference because we'll be looking at the, the outline, the, the Bible study that we have started some week ago, some weeks ago. Uh, and that is Nehemiah part 3. Nehemiah part 3. I know today we are talking about a meal of victory. So you combine the two topics. The topic for today is <laughs> meal of victory. But we'll be considering Nehemiah part 3. So let's take our Bible reading quickly. Nehemiah chapter, se chapter 2 verse 17 to 20. Nehemiah chapter 2, verse 17 to 20. The book of Nehemiah is in the Old Testament. I can see some people searching through the New Testament for the book of Nehemiah. Amen. And when I read quickly. Then said I unto them, Ye see the distress that we are, we are in, how Jerusalem lieth waste, and the gates thereof are burnt with fire. Come and let us build up the walls of Jerusalem, the wall of Jerusalem, that we be no more a reproach. Then I told them of the, of, of the hand of my God, which was good upon me, as also the king's words that he had spoken unto me. And they said, Let us rise up and build. So they strengthened their hands for this good work. But when Sambalat the Oonite o o and Tobiah, the servant, the Ammonite, and Geshem, the Arabian, heard it. They laughed us to, to scorn and despised us and said, What is this thing that ye do? Will ye rebel against the king? Then answered I them and said unto them, The God of heaven, he will prosper us. Therefore, we, we his servant, we arise and build. But ye have no portion, nor right, nor memorial in Jerusalem. May the Lord bless his word in our ears in Jesus' name. Um, last week, that is in the last series, in the last part of this series, 
we 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 looked at the fact that Nehemiah journeyed journeyed to Judea in Jerusalem for for the rebuilding of the work. And we and we also learned about how he arrived and how he went to do like a, a survey of the work to be done. And he did the inspection of the walls and the gate that was born to know what and what he, he, he needs to do. And we emphasize that while he was doing all that, he, he intentionally said he did not mention it to anybody yet. And we emphasize that many of us are in one challenge or the other today because we let out the plan and the purpose and the vision that God gave to us, we let them out too early. We consider the fact that Joseph had a dream and he told it to his, to his brethren. And when he told them the dream, their reaction was very negative. And yet, this same Joseph went ahead and still told them about the second dream. That was why, if you look at the journey of his life, the journey that's supposed to be short ended up being long. And the journey that's supposed to be smooth ended up being what? Being off. Do you know that when you let out your vision, when you let out the vision and the plan of God for your life too early or to the wrong set of people, you might not get to the place of fulfillment. If not for the grace of God upon Joseph, maybe he would have fallen for the wife of Potiphar. If not for his grace, maybe he would have run away when he was in control in the house of Potiphar. He had different opportunities. But how many of us can endure the trials and temptation of our wrongdoing? Bible says when you go through trials and temptation, count it all joy. But that trial and temptation, Bible says you must allow patience to have its place. Many of us, because we are Adamic in nature, we love to shift blame. When you sin or you did something wrong, you shift the blame from yourself to God. God, why did you allow this to happen to me? Joseph told the dream that God gave him to his brothers. But do you know, when he was going through the challenges, he never said, God, where are you? He realized he made a mistake. So he endured. I pray that the Lord will give you grace, even to endure in Jesus' name. As we continue in our study today of this book of Nehemiah, may the Lord bless us richly in Jesus' name. We have two lessons outlined quickly. The first lesson outlined says, let us arise and build. Let us arise and build. As you know, we have said that this month, When uh, is, is a month that we need to arise, and we also emphasize that to arise to different people means different things. To someone who is dead, arise means come back to life. As you can see in the book of John chapter 11, verse 39 to 43, Jesus Christ got to the tomb of Lazarus. He said, come back to life. To the one who is sleeping, arise means wake up. Wake up. And to the one who has woken, who is still lying up, arise means get up from your bed and probably sit up. And to the one who is seated, arise means what? Stand up. And on and on like that because of time. Now, they said, arise and let us build. Do you know that it is possible to say with the mouth and say, arise, and so I'll say, I will arise, and you can do nothing about it. That's why many of us, we made so many pledges to God. 
which we call New Year Resolution. God, this year, I will pray every day. This year, I will read my Bible every day. Three months is gone. Do this call by yourself. Do you pass or fail? Because you see, the prodigal son in Luke chapter 15, the prodigal son said, I will arise and go to my father. But do you know when he was saying it, the father did not move. And the Bible says when he said it, what did he do? He then arose and began to move. Note very well, when he was even moving, the father did not move until he got to the entrance of the house. Listen to me, brethren. When you say, God, I need you. God, I want to serve you. God, I need you to help me. He's willing to help. He says, my hands are not shortened. My ears are not heavy. That, could, that nothing can hinder me from assisting you. Why? Because I, he said, I'm the ever present help in time of trouble. Psalm 46, verse 1. But you know, God is saying, those excessive loads that you are carrying, when do you want to drop them? Many of us say, God, I need you to help me, but we want to hold on to our ways. Many of us say, God, I want you to anoint me, but yet we are too used to our food. Listen to me. God is saying, when you say arise, because even in English, arise is an action word. You must stand and move. And we also said, in case you are walking, Arise means running. Because some of us, we, 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 we have heard people say, well, I'm not doing too bad. But do you know anything that is too bad or not too bad? It's already bad. You're only looking for something to qualify it. When it's not too bad, it is bad already. And God does not tolerate anything that is bad. Because it's not an average God. He's a holy God. Is a complete God, is a perfect God. This God, he says, I want to help you. But the challenge is, are you ready for my help? He said, he says, these people, they call to me with their mouth, but their heart is far from me. You know, when you read 4 Samuel chapter 16, 4 Samuel 16 verse 7, Jesus Christ said, in the house of uh, Jesse, he said, Hi, the Lord, I don't see the face. I see both the face and the heart. 1 Samuel 16, 7. If, when you do it something and you think nobody knows, remember he knows. You may, you know, Maybe I should, you know, maybe I should ask, when was the last time that you were alone with God, that you got broken? You know, many of us nowadays, even when we come to the house of God, we pray as if we are the chairman of God. Some just spoke. Have you asked yourself if truly you are genuinely born again? Those days when you first gave your life to Jesus, there are times when you will just hear a sermon. And before you know, tears are coming from your eyes. Let me ask you as a child of God. And you need to ask yourself and answer it by yourself. When was the last time that you got so broken to shed tears before him? Remember, the Bible says, the only person that God cannot say no to, is the one with a broken spirit and a contract heart. And you may be wondering, does he, is he concerned about my heart? Yes. Psalm 15, verse 3 to 5. He mentioned it. You want to ascend to the hills? You have to be of a pure heart. And this is Nehemiah. He came in and said, we need to build. And the people said, let us build. And the Bible says after Nehemiah, uh, the outline says after Nehemiah had encouraged the people 
and told them the reason why the wall of Jerusalem had to be built. They all agreed with him. They said, let us arise and build. And when you read further, the Bible says, and they arose and they started building. Do you know that these people, when Nehemiah came, they did not go to learn how to build after Nehemiah came. Are you with me? That means they had the talent before. <laughs> the talent was inside. And they kept the talent. What is it that God has placed in your hand that you are, that, that you are not using? Ask yourself. They knew how to build. But they refused to build. They, Paul said to Timothy, he said there is a gift of God inside of you. Use it. The Bible says, tear it up. What is that grace that God has given to you? Let me tell you, brethren, Every good thing that God gives to you that you do not use will remain dormant. They have this ability. They have the knowledge. But the action was not there. How many of us are actually waiting for somebody to come and beg you before you will do the work of God? They were living in there, they saw the work of God unattended to, and they were comfortable. When was the last time that he pricked you in your heart, genuinely, that something is not properly done in the house of God? Even there are some of you here, you come, you come to church, you see, oh, this department is not very good. I know how to do it better when I was in my country. But because I don't want to be involved. One thing I need you to know is this. Either you use the talent or not. On the last day, everybody will give an account of that talent. So, the first thing you do, uh, they, 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 were, they had hidden talent. Time will not permit us to dwell on, but I pray the Holy Spirit will especially to you. They had hidden talent. They had abandoned talent. They had unused talent, uncultivated talent. And do you know the funny part? The whole world is waiting for the use of that talent. Romans chapter 8, verse 17 to 19. Bible says the whole heart is waiting for your manifestation. The gift of God upon your life, the whole world is waiting. There are some of you here. You know what God is asking you to do. You are probably you are supposed to be an evangelist. He decided, no, 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 no. My work, my work, my family. Ah, listen. When you miss the time, God can never be stranded. And for everyone, he has a replacement. He says, when you begin to complain, what have you done? Some people went all out for this gospel, even to the shedding of blood. What have you sacrificed? David sinned before God, even though he was the king. He cried to God, he said, Oh Lord, take not away thy spirit from me. Some of us here, we know that even what God is asking you to do, you are not doing. But you are still comfortable. You know, whenever you are, you are comfortable to disobey God, it's a sign for you to know that you are a dead man. Because it's only a dead man that does not have anything moved him or her concerning life. And Jesus is life. Bible says you receive him, you have life. You don't receive him, you are a dead person. 
And these people, they knew. They saw the temple. Do you know some of them are even living opposite the temple? The temple was in ruin, but it does not bother them for years. They hid their talent. They waited for somebody to come and help them. To come and encourage them. To come and beg them. Huh. But you see, the Bible made it clear that if you refuse to do the work of God, if you refuse to be part of it, if you refuse to, to be the one that we encourage others to, to, to do the work, he says there will be a lot of trouble piled up for you. Isaiah chapter 30 verse 6. He said you, if you read, uh, you can read verse 5 and 6. He says you will have pile up of troubles. In other words, he's saying anytime you disobey God, anytime you disobey God, the only thing that will end your life is shame. And you know, Nehemiah said we need to build this house because of one reason. What was it? It says so that we can remove the shame and reproach that the enemy has brought upon our life, upon our city, and upon our God. Let me ask you, what is that thing that you failed to do that has made unbelievers to ask you, where is your God? What is that thing that you refuse to use that God has given you that is making the society to say, and you say you are a Christian? What have you involved yourself in that has in, 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 uh, introduced a virus or a sickness to your life? And people are saying, physician, heal yourself. Remember, Jesus Christ said, you are made to be the light. And light is meant to shine to others so that they can see the way. You know, it is dangerous or it is difficult when you are living with somebody in the same house and you are sick and you are telling the person, Jesus can heal. <laughs> but do you know, everything you need to survive, he has given to you. Bible says, Ephesians 3.20, it says, now unto him, that is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we could ever ask or think. According to what? There is a power. There is a power. There is a generator. That, is, that generator is, is issuing different kind of things. The Bible says, he laid before me a table. On the table there is healing. On the table there is deliverance. On the table there is power. On the table there is protection. I even see Christians who live with fear. <laughs> Bible says, we have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear, but we have received what? The spirit whereby of boldness, whereby we cry, Abba, Baba. You know, it is, everybody can call that the, or everybody can call father. But it's not everybody that can call daddy. Ha! Huh. I don't know. Our Holy Spirit will just help me to help. But you see, when they refuse to do what they need to do, they have to wait. You know, in Joel chapter 2, verse 25, Bible says, when you read 25, 26, and 20, it said three times, my people shall not be ashamed. Three times. Ha! Huh. Nehemiah said, there is shame here. Yeah. What is he saying? As Christians, as a child of the God of heavens, we are not supposed to be in shame. Remember, it is possible for you to be going through something, and yet, you may think it's a normal lifestyle. Ecclesiastes chapter 10, verse 5 to 7. Bible says, I have seen an evil upon the head. I see servant upon the horse. And what? The princes are the one trekking. It's an abnormality. But you see, I have also noticed 
that the priests may think that trekking is an exercise. Many of us Christians now, we absorb even the knowledge and the things that the world says and not what the Bible says. The only thing that cannot change is what is written. But here we are today. We don't even know what we have. And the Bible says the only thing that can destroy a Christian is lack of knowledge. Lack of knowledge. These people, they had the ability. They knew everything, but they, were, they, they left the house of God unbuilt. They, 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 they left the house they, they never, do you know that everything they used to, to build the house, they didn't borrow. They just brought it out from their treasures. All the money, all the gold, they didn't, went, they didn't go to buy. They brought them. That means they have it. There are some, you know, gold, Bible says in Psalm 139 verse 14, Psalm 139, Bible says, you are fearfully and wonderfully made. God made you a special being. He made you special so that everything you need to survive as a Christian has been given to you. But many of us, everyone is watching and say, ha, ah, despite all I've invested on this. You know, I'm praying to God. Maybe one day God will give me grace to talk about the city that's, that, that, that swallow giants. Many of you are giant Christians before you came to UAE. What turned you to an average Christian? When? How? Bible says arise. That's what he's saying. Arise. Arise because it is time. You know now because comfort has come. Do you know? That Nehemiah left comfort just for the concern of God and his people. Nehemiah had empathy for the people. It was like Jesus. He was compassionate. Bible says, Nehemiah said, see the place where we dwell. He didn't say, see where you dwell. I don't know if you get it. There are two different things. He associated himself with them. He said, this is where we dwell. How much time have you seen somebody who is a Christian suffering and you see that this is concerning me. But some of us felt because it is not my work. It's all about the world. I have what to eat. And a brother is lacking. A sister cannot eat. And you are not concerned. There is a problem somewhere. You know why? Because you are no more living. Ah, only the living have emotion. Only the living have empathy. Jesus Christ, everywhere he go, Bible says he had compassion, and because of his compassion, he does wonders. He heal, he deliver. Nehemiah came and said, hey, "It's not good for the name of our God." Maybe if you read the book of uh, Ezra, you will understand better that it was said that in that city of Judah, kings uh, were staying there, and these kings, they ruled the world before. And they have a God who is able to do everything. And this is your God. That everybody has been hearing. Hey, you say you are a Christian. You say you are a Christian and you are not bothered about to portray on how to portray that God to be who he is. Can people look at your work? Can they look at your lifestyle and say sincerely your God is a good God? Have you wondered what was the attitude and the workforce or, 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 the, or, the, or, or the kind of characteristics that Nehemiah had that made the king to give him escort, that made the king to ask the storekeeper to release everything that he needs for him. Many of us say, so, oh, everywhere I go, there's no favor. People don't like me. I can't get this. Uh, it's difficult to get this. Go back. When did you disobey God? 
When did you leave his commandment? Because he says, when you leave my work turned on, shame, anguish, problem. Isaiah 30 verse 6 that we read. He said, those are the things that you will get. <laughs> Do you know that it takes a child of God to know what he or she has in salvation? And you may be born again. But if you don't know, what you don't know will still be your master. Ha! It took Nehemiah to remind them that as a child of God, shame, reproach is not supposed to be anywhere around you. You know why? Joshua chapter 5 verse 9. God said today, I have rolled away reproach and shame from you. And when you talk about the reproach of Egypt, go and check all that God did in Egypt. It covers every aspect of troubles of life. He said, I have rolled it away. And who is the one talking? His name is Jesus. The same yesterday, today and forever. Whatever he says is forever settled. Hebrews 13, 8 says it's the same yesterday, today and forever. And when you read Psalm 119, verse 89, he says, hey, thy word, O Lord, is forever settled. His words cannot change. Psalm 33, verse 8 to 11. Bible made it clear that once he has spoken, he stands firm. And do you know? Psalm 34, verse 5. Bible says they look up unto him. And their faces were lightened. And what happened? They were not ashamed. When you look out to Jesus, the author and the finisher of your faith, it is impossible for you to focus on him and have shame. I've not seen. Bible says, Psalm 37 verse 25, David said, I was young, now I'm old, yet I have not seen the righteous forsaken, nor he seed begging bread. Do you trust God? Have you checked? Why is my life in lack? Why am I finding it difficult to do what I want to do for God? Check, maybe you have abandoned the things he asks you to do. Time will not permit me. Bible made it clear that he will deliver us from all trouble. He said, he said, God will answer us. You know, there was a time David had a passion for God. He had a passion. He said to God, I will build you a house. God said, eh, David, you want all the kings that have come before you, none of them thought about it. Who told you? Ha! Huh? God said, Ah, this one, I will ensure that my son that is coming will come to your lineage. You know, there's a kind of sacrifice you will give to God that will exceed your own tenor. It will go your great-grandchildren. Bible said in Gen Genesis 22, when we, we can first read Genesis 18, God began to tempt Abraham. But when he offered of Isaac, God said, by this I know that what? That you love me. Genesis 22, verse 1 to 3. God said, I know now, Abraham, that you love me. Okay, he loves you. What have you got to do? God said, Abraham, in blessing, I will bless thee. Ah. And he said, it's not going to stop there. Go and read chapter 22, Genesis 22. God settles the future of Abraham forever. And that's why we are, we are called children of Abraham today. Just one sacrifice valuable sacrifice david said some second samuel 24 24 he said i will not offer unto god that which cost me nothing what do you what do you sacrifice Oh, I finished late from work. I am tired. Oh, and I have to go out early tomorrow. But I will still go to the house of God. Psalm, 120, Psalm, Psalm 27, verse 1 to 4. David said, he, he, my work is tedious. Family commitment. Uh, uh, this, this, this. But 
I will still ensure that I get myself to the house of God. Ah, you know, when you read further, you will understand that when you arise, God will enable you. But many of us, we talk about arising, but we never did. I pray that we will change our mind today in Jesus' name. David, when he said he wanted to build the house, God said, no, 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 no. Uh, you have shed too much blood. He begged God. God said, no, okay, your son will build it for me. He said, okay, if that's the case, I know what to do. You know what he did? Bible says, everything that will be needed to build the house, David provided it. <laughs> and he left you know what they call Mesilanos? And Bible says what he left as Mesilanos was more than the quantity of what is needed to build. Oh, some of you, ah, oh, the church, they need, they need one dirham. Eh, maybe they've gotten one dirham. Give your own. Ah. You hear the church says, hey, be part of this. I've not paid my house rent. Ah. Let me tell you. Anyone who does not give is qualified to end in penury. You know why? There's no breakthrough to prosperity than in giving. And that's why I'm, I, I'm, I'm, I'm jumping to outline two now. He says, our God, our God, the God that is seated in heaven, he will do what? He will prosper us. You know, there's something they said. Sambalat and Tobiah knew that they were about to do the work. And what did they do? They begin to mock them. But do you know, there's nothing that answers or that solves argument than result. And like I've always said, I've checked through the whole world. Nobody argues with a result. And this is our God. In case you argue with one, he will give you double. Our father in the Lord, when he became born again, the wife already had three children, born by Caesarean operation. And they said, the fourth one, they said, we will wait on Jesus. Everybody, doctors, Physicians, all professionals, eh? your wife already have three cuts already. If you try it, she will, she will bleed to death. And then my father and the Lord went to God. Says, your word says, for with God, nothing shall be impossible. Go and ask the doctors, is practically impossible for someone who have delivered three times by Caesarean to have a natural birth. And you know what? Even the in-law came to him and said, if you kill our daughter. <laughs> but he held on to God. And they delivered the baby. And the baby was even bigger than all the children they've had before. And then, some of his friends said, who are doctors, they said, you are just lucky. That was just by a chance. Ah, okay, God said, okay, I will prove to you that I don't walk by magic. And the wife became pregnant again. This time around, and they gave birth, natural birth. And this last one was twice as big as the first one. What is it that you want to prosper? Obey God. Sacrifice. Commit yourself to him and to his work. He said in Joshua 1.8, the only way for you to prosper is by the word. Many of you go about your business to gain knowledge. Some of you go for courses for the work you want to do, and yet you lack the knowledge of the world. Why will you prosper? 
By the way, let me tell you, it is possible for you to prosper in the world. In this world, I mean. But if it is not prosperity from God, the end result is worse. And I will prove it to you. When you read, you know, David said at the time he was concerned and said, God, I'm serving you. I'm doing everything. And yet, unbelievers are making it. I know many of us have asked that question before. And some of us are still thinking like that. And that's why some of us are, are doing things that are not godly. Listen to me. David was asking God, say, God, why am I this sacrificing, fasting, praying, praying in tongues? And yet, unbelievers, in fact, they don't even fall sick. And Christians are going to the hospital. Psalm 73, when you get home, go and read everything. He said, God said, hey, come, 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 come. He went to the house of the Lord and God showed him. God said, see, all those people, I am placing them so high. So that when I destroy them, it's going to be in a second. And nobody will remember them again. Ha. Bible says, it is the blessings of the Lord that make it rich. And God does not add sorrow to it. You can have money and still lack joy. You can have connection and still lack joy. If you don't believe, go and ask the woman of shoe name. Elisha said, Madam, you have been taking care of us all the time. What do you want us to do? You want contract? You want me to talk to the government? He said, I have everyone in my hand. Elisha said, Gehazi, find out. This woman lacked joy. What is that thing she wanted? I said, ah. she, ha she needs what money cannot buy. But then, God will prosper us. But do you know, when Sambalat and Tobiah was about to hinder them from walking, there was something they said. They said to Tambalat and, and, and uh, Sambalat and Tobiah, they said, listen, when it comes to the matter of the kingdom, you have no part inside of it. What did they say? They said, you have no part in Jerusalem. Jerusalem is the city of the living God. You know, when Saul met Samuel, Samuel told him, God has chosen you to be king. The uncle asked him, what did Samuel say? The Bible says, he, 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 concerning the matter of the kingdom, he did not tell him. First Samuel chapter 9. He didn't tell him. That's why the Bible says, hey, your tongue, your tongue. When you read Psalm 39, verse 11, he says, hey, Psalm 39, verse 11, he says, if he, when thou rebook, thou correct man for iniquity, thou makest his beauty to, co to consume away, like a moat, surely every man is in vain, is vanity. When you do what? When you don't do the will of God, he can decide to be hungry with you. And by the way, God said, every day he is angry with the wicked. Proverbs 7, 11. The Bible says every day God is angry with the wicked. Every day. And I'm sure if there's anything you don't want, you don't want God to be angry with you. How come you don't want to do his work? The Bible says, well, and, they, and, and they laugh them to scorn. They are not the first and they won't be the last. They laughed Jesus to scorn when he went to the house of Jairus. He said, hey, the baby, the daughter is not dead. She's sleeping. What did the Bible say? And the Bible says, the mourners, they do what? They laugh him to scorn. But do you notice what happened in that scenario? The people that were crying, no, 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 no. They begin to laugh. No, 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 no. It means that even the, the sympathizing spirit is not genuine. You can imagine somebody going from one extreme to the other within a second. That's why I pity those of you who want everybody to come and tell you sorry. 
Eh, eh, sorry, it's okay. Ah, it's not from their heart. Do you know, as a child of God, nobody is supposed to bring anything sorrowful to your presence. Because the Bible says, He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. And when you abide in that, that shadow, you are in His presence. In His presence, there is fullness of joy. And He said it all in Psalm 91. When you read that, it says, Hey, a thousand may fall by thy right hand. Ten thousand by the right hand. He said, only with your ears you will hear them. But many of us, we, we, we take joy when people are pitying us. Listen to me. You are not supposed to be pitied. You are a child of the King of Kings. Jesus died so that you and I can triumph. Bible says in Colossians chapter 2, verse 14 and 15, he says he died, he nailed every principalities and power to the cross, he made an open show of them, so that you and I can have total victory. Every mark, every ordinance, he removed them, the ones that have been, the ones to come. He removed them. He nailed them openly. What Jesus has removed has no right to come back to your life. Remember, he that watches over his well neither slumber nor sleep. His eyes are sharp. More than that of an eagle. Remember, one thing the Bible says, outline says, but Nehemiah knew his God. He did what? He knew his God. And you can, you can relate that with Daniel 11.32. He says, do it that do know. The, the last part of it says, they that do know their God, they shall be strong. And they shall what? They shall do exploit. Nehemiah did exploit. That's why we are reading about him today. They shall do exploit. I have told you, God does not take delight in average Christian. If you want to be hot, be hot. You want to be cold, be cold. Don't be hot on one side, cold on one side. Don't be lukewarm. God says that we have nothing to do with you. And why they were laughing him to scorn? Remember, Bible says, Psalm 1, verse 1. He said, the only man that will be blessed, that will prosper, is a man that does not walk in the ways of the, of the unrighteous, of the ungodly, I beg your pardon. No walk, no stand in, this, uh, in the ways of sinners, nor seated in the seat of the scornful. Remember, what did they do? They were scorning them. They wanted to do the work of God. They were scorning them. But, you know, Bible made it clear that except you speak to this mountain to move, the mountain will not move. When you read the scripture, Bible says Isaiah 54, verse 17. It says, Every tongue that rises up against you in judgment, you shall. It's not the pastor that will help you to condemn it. You are the one that will say, Hey, I know in whom I believe. I am a child of the living God. My father had won everything for me. And when you read verse 3 of that Psalm 1, it says, a demand that adhere to these guidelines, that man will be the one that will prosper. Bible says Daniel took it to the word of God and he prospered all through. And for you to know how much God is interested in your prosperity, third John 2, Bible says, the wish of God above every other thing 
is that you must prosper. I know when I talk about prosperity, the first thing that comes to all of you is money, money, money. Let me tell you, money is not prosperity. <laughs> uh -huh. You may not agree, but let me give you one example. If your bank account is, your bank account plus your asset plus everything is $5 billion, you may say, oh, I'm prosperous, I'm prosperous, right? But you know, at the day you have a problem of $10 billion, you become a pauper. Because you will still go and borrow. <laughs> oh, Lord. And you may have multi millions or multi billions of money, and yet you can't eat. Prosperity means all round blessing. So let's conclude. You know, we're talking about arise unto victory. We started by talking about the talent that you have buried. All the words that you've heard. That prophecy that had come to your life. You know, when Jesus met Peter in Luke chapter 5 and he used the boat of Peter, the first thing he said to Peter is that from now on, you will no more catch men. And you no more catch fish. You begin to do what? Catch men. Many of us are here. When you gave your life to Jesus, Luke chapter 5, verse 1 to 7, when you gave your life to Jesus, there was something God told you. There was a, there was a career pattern you are following. God said, no, not again. But Bible says, Peter waited for the Pentecost and he felt that God was too late. When he got to John 20, he said, Men and brethren, I go a fishing. Ha! Huh. When did you decide or conclude to go back to that thing that you failed in before? That thing that Jesus warned you to say, Hey, son, I will have mercy this time around. Don't do it again. When did you go back to it? The Bible says that night, they caught nothing. But do you know, for God to restore them, he did something. He invited them. Because when Peter went, because he's the head, and he's the most, uh, the bold among them, he says, I go and fish it. All of them followed. Jesus Christ said, ah, you are the one to carry the gospel around. But you know, he did not just restore them. What did he say? He said, come and eat. Come and eat. Why? Because he said to Elijah, Elijah, the journey ahead of you is long. Second Kings chapter, uh, 1 Kings 19, verse 4 to 8. He said, Elijah, the journey is long. You need strength. Say, come and eat. And the Bible says he had the meal. He walked 40 days and 40 nights. He was not tired. Jesus said to Peter, come. And do you know? He said, he asked them, come and eat. He prepared the fish. They didn't bring the fish from where, they, because they caught nothing. Every communion you may even see people serving it, but it is prepared by the Lord. And when you come to eat, it's a meal of restoration unto victory. Because when Jesus came, he came to restore to us everything that Adam lost. Or better put, everything that man lost in Adam. I want to believe God with you. That beginning from today, as you partake in the communion, you will not fail again. Amen. I pray that as you partake in tonight's communion, victory will be your daily routine. Amen. The boldness 
that will chase away every form of fear, we come to you. Because when they heard the meal, he told them, he assured them, Holy Ghost is coming. Go and wait. There are some of you here, God has given you promises. And you felt it's no more coming. As you partake of tonight's communion, your hope will be restored. Because Colossians chapter 1, verse 27 says, Christ in me, the hope of glory. And Jesus Christ said, whenever you partake of the communion, I and the Father will come inside of you to revitalize the hope that Jesus has given you. Saying you will be the head and not the tail. You will be above and not beneath. Isaiah 41 verse 10, he says, Hey, say ye to Adeyemi. Isaiah 41 verse 10. He said, I will hold you by my right hand. And I will say to you, don't be afraid. And he said, when you read to verse 13, he said, Adeyemi, you will never know shame. Ha. Huh. But you see, Proverbs 28 verse 13 says, He that covereth his sin shall not prosper. But he that confesseth and forsake we have mercy. If you are here, you have not given your life to Jesus. This is not about talking about coming to church. It's about do you, do you actually have a relationship with him? Holy communion is for family. It's not for everybody. If you are not born again, if you are not living only, if you are, if you are, not, if you are living in sin and you are not ready to let go of the sin, when they serve the bread and the wine, just tell them to take it away. Because the Bible says in 1 Corinthians 11, 28, it says when you eat, you need to examine yourself. It says the meal that should bring you healing that same meal can kill. Since some eat, instead of healing, they die. Well then, we may all be together as a family, but remember, Bible says, sin is a reproach. Proverbs 14, 28, sin is a reproach to anybody, it doesn't matter, even to a nation. And Jesus said, I have rolled away the reproach. Everything causing you shame We end today. Amen. Every curse upon your life will be terminated today. Amen. Let us bow our heads. Let's talk to the Almighty God. Let's ask Him. First, I want you to thank the Lord for the word that He has sent to us. Let's thank him for the word. Let's thank him for the grace, for the privilege, for the opportunity. Let's thank him. Let's say, Father, we are grateful. Lord, indeed, we are grateful. You are the Lord. That is your name. Your glory you will not share with anyone. Father, we are grateful. Thank you for all that you have done. Thank you for your love, for your mercy, for your compassion, for your faithfulness. And as you are beginning to pray, begin to talk to the Lord and say, Father, anything in me that we disqualify me from this table, Lord, reveal it to me now so that I can confess. And if you are here, you are harboring bitterness, anger, or anything that we in there that's not godly, it is time for you to let it go now. If the person you are angry with or you are, you are keeping manly sweet is here, yeah, go and meet the person now and restitute your ways. If the person is not here, make a, make, make a solid determination to God that after the minute after this service, you will settle with that person you refuse to forgive. That person that offended you or that person that you offended you must make a resolute determination that God, I don't want anything to hinder my ways. I don't want to partake of this body. 
and this blood unworthily. Lord, have mercy tonight. And if you are here, you have not given your life to Jesus. Today will be a good time for you to accept Jesus. Remember, if you don't have Jesus, you will have crisis. And if you have been struggling by your own strength, why don't you allow the burden bearer to carry you? If you are here, you want to give your life to Jesus, could you please just lift up your hands above your head and I would like to pray with you. Wherever you are in the auditorium, you want to accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior, or you have gone astray, you want to re re rededicate your life back to him, or you are tired of struggling, you want God to help you. Just lift up your hands above your head, wherever you are, and I would like to pray with you. Jesus is the one calling you. You are not coming to man. Remember, he knows everything. He knows the whole story. If you keep on pretending, on the day of judgment, he will play this, the record of today to you that you heard the word. You heard the word in an undiluted manner. And Malventure, you are so familiar with the word that the word is no more having effect upon your life. You can make a change today. You can come back to get the Lord today and ask the almighty God to please, in his mercy, give you a new heart. A heart. A heart that we, that we do his will. A heart that we pant for his word. Thank you, my Father. Talk to the Almighty God. Ask the Lord, my Father and my God. Oh, Holy Spirit, I thank you. I give you glory. I give you honor. I give you adoration. For there is just no one like you. Oh, what a mighty God we serve. What an awesome God we serve. Holy Spirit, I thank you. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed.